Hello everyone, this video is about CK12 and Canvas. What I'm going to show you today is how you can use uh, CK12 digital resources as an alternative to your textbook. So before I continue, let me go ahead and outline what I plan to talk about in this video. There are many webinars and informational videos about CK12, but these are things I want to focus on that I found useful and that you might not be able to find as easily on the internet to help you teach using the CK12 system. First of all, we're going to talk about what is CK12, so the basics, what exactly is this website that is called CK12, what does it offer, and what kind of materials can be found in CK12. So first we'll look at the flexbooks and the adaptive practice questions that come along with the chapters. We'll look at the physics and chemistry simulations. We will look at the PLICS, which stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore and how those can uh, be found and what they offer. Then we're going to look at how to find these resources on CK12. So once we've looked at what the different resources are, how can you find them so that you can use them in Canvas? And once you've found them, I'll show you how to save them to your library and we can move on to number three about how to add assignments from your CK12 library to Canvas because now you have saved what you think might be useful, it would be easy to find them and pull them into Canvas. And when you add these to a Canvas, these assignments, these resources, it will actually let students go to the um, CK12 page through Canvas and they can then read and complete the practice assignments and it will auto grade them. And I can show you, lastly, at the very end of the video, how the auto grading works through Canvas and then how you can view student results because they have a powerful system that maintains its own grade book that shows student answers to each question along with their mastery level. So I'll show you how you can access that through Canvas and how you can use CK12 to really simplify your grading because it will grade assignments automatically and that can then be passed directly to PowerSchool. So for those of you who do not know, I am uh, Thomas Freeman. I am the science and tech teacher at East Tip Middle School. And uh, uh, this year and last year, I have been using CK12 very extensively in my classrooms. I find it very easy to use. Uh, it also makes the transition to virtual learning um, and digital work very easy for me. Um, there are a few quirks about it, but the students, I think, overall enjoy it. Uh, and the fact that it has lots of features that work very well for them. I also uh, used this tool um, back before I started working here at East Tip Middle School when I was um, working in Vermont as a teacher there. And I found that this system is very useful because it is out there for free. It's a free resource. It is um, monitored by the CK12 organization, but it's also a community uh, collaboration of tools that is created by a nonprofit organization that allows students to learn across the United States and even around the world and many subjects. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how can you access the, uh, the CK12 resources and what can you use them for and how do we get this to work with Canvas because we don't want to have to have too many different systems working here. How can we focus on using Canvas to assign these textbook readings along with the practices for students and have them auto graded and put directly into the Canvas and then the PowerSchool gradebook. So that is what I will cover today. So to begin with, Let's look at what exactly is CK12. So for many of you out there who've never used CK12 before, I think it's important that we go over what exactly the system is and what it has to offer. So we'll start by looking at the CK12 homepage. So I will switch to that right now and we'll take a look at it. Uh, basically, CK12 is a free nonprofit service available to any teacher so that it can be used as an alternative to your traditional textbook. They're trying to provide high quality digital textbooks to all students in order to help um, provide students around the world with high quality educational resources. And so because it's a nonprofit, everything is out there for free. Uh, if you wanna donate, you may, as you can see up here in the top page. But essentially this is trying to equalize education for everyone. So let's look at first what kind of subjects they have to offer. So on this page, um, this can be found under the subjects tab right here. 
on the top of their homepage. And it says, what are you looking for today? This lists all of the topics that they have under the CK12 umbrella. Now you can see that a lot of it has to do with um, math and science. So we have uh, all these different math subjects by topic. There is math by grade level all the way from, uh, we have grades one all the way up until eight. And then we have some high school subjects. We even get all the way up into calculus. Uh, there is science starting from as low as kindergarten all the way up to high school level. They are now starting to add uh, social studies, which when I first started using CK12, they have they did not offer. They're even trying to add some English materials, which once again, last time I checked, which was a while ago at this point, it was still in development, but that is something also that you might wanna look into if you're an English teacher. And they even get into some deeper uh, subjects. They get into astronomy, engineering, uh, photography, technology, which I have used because as a science and tech teacher, I have pulled some resources from engineering and technology to use in my classroom so I can try and transition away into a more digital interactive textbook. They've started adding college courses. Now they have a new adult education section, which I have not looked at and won't cover. And they're even trying to make uh, CK12 more international with their translations over here. So what exactly do they have? Well, I'm gonna to switch to another tab that I've already opened to show just kind of basically what CK12 is all about. Up here, I have a textbook page that I've pulled up. They have these things called Flexbooks 2.0, which essentially is their digital textbook. And they call them Flexbooks because they're flexible. You can assign them digitally. And they have associated materials that you can see down here. They have video links um, and other websites that link to help associate with that topic so students can learn in multiple ways. And they have practices uh, linked to them, which I'll show you in a bit. So they just call them flexbooks because they, they're flexible textbooks that you can adapt and change, and they have all of these added materials here. So let's just take a look at it. So this is one chapter or one page in the textbook. This one is on the atom. And if I click on it and I start it, what I'll see is I'm gonna be introduced here to a page in this flexbook textbook. So this one, you can see it's labeled 3.1 atom. That means it's because it's um, section three, chapter one. It's all about the atom. And usually they start with a picture, um, they'll have some questions, and then when you go down, it has a text. And they have added some interactive materials that are in the textbook so that students, not only can they read, but they can also play around with some interactives inside the textbook here. So this one here is an interactive, which is the timeline that shows how atoms have changed over time, the different models of the atom. And so students can read about it and they can see as they move the slider, how the model of the atom has changed over the years. And it even morphs and shows the change in the atom. And this scroll down, there's more uh, reading material here. They've got some pictures that go along with it. Oftentimes they'll include questions in the text that students can use to reflect and think about the topic. We'll continue down here. Let's look what else they've got. More questions. And at least in the science um, textbooks, they often give a little summary and along with review questions. Now this is something you could potentially assign your students to do on paper if you wished. Um, they could work on this, they could turn it into you just like you would with a traditional textbook. But one thing that makes uh, CK12 very powerful is that they have what you call an adaptive practice. And this is something where students can go in and they can work on questions that adapt to the student learning, just like you see with many of these computer adaptive tests, such as iLearn or the graduate uh, record examination, those kind of tests. And that can be accessed down here by clicking this view practice button in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna pull that up. Now, if you were in Canvas and you were to assign this reading to the students, they would have to complete this practice material here in the side panel in order to get full points. So let's take a look at it. So right here, it says, it gives you an estimated time of how long it will take to complete the assignment. Uh, and it says, you need to get 10 correct answers to complete the practice goal. And the way this works is that students can take unlimited number of practice sessions on this until they get 10 questions right. 
So let me click preview here to get it started. And it's actually going to pull it up full screen for us. So when you get to practice, it introduces you to this tutorial here that says you start by getting 10 right. So you can continue practicing with as many questions as you need until you get 10 questions right. Um, the questions will change based on your answers. If um, you have a uh, question that you get right, the next question will be harder. If you get a question wrong, the next question will be easier. And it might even drop you a few hints. And here it's going to give you a score reading here of how many difficult questions you had, how many um, easy questions that you had. So you can get an idea of, you know, how well am I doing, not only in terms of getting questions right, but what level of questions can I answer? And then lastly, down here, it shows students how they can get help. There's a scratch pad that they can use to doodle or, um, you know, make little notes um, to try and figure out the answers to a question. They can get a hint, which when contributors, volunteers to CK12, when they put a question in, they would drop a hint in. That would make it easier for the students. So let's go ahead and let's check out the practice here. I'm going to click Start Practicing. And here it's going to pull up a question. Now it will randomly pull up a question related to the topic. And here it says, uh, just a multiple choice question. It says, particles within atoms include what? Okay, so we've got protons, electrons, neutrons. I can select all the above. Um, so I'll select that. I can check it. It tells me I've gotten that one right. And up here at the top, it shows I got one question out of 10 correct. I need to continue until this bar is full in order to complete the assignment. It will also tell me my skill level, which is going to be based on how many difficult questions I have answered and how many easy questions I have answered correctly. Next here. All right, so now we have another multiple choice question. Let's look at some of the features that are available to students when, when they're struggling or if they get questions wrong. So down here, there's a little character they have called Flexi. And Flexi is there to help the students out. And you can click on it to get a hint. Here you can see in the upper left-hand corner, um, it says a hint that a teacher has put in there to help students answer the question without giving away the answer. So it says the question is atoms of helium or nickel represent blank. These are pure substances that cannot be broken down into simpler materials or particles. And here the hint is they are all represented by different symbols on the periodic table. Now, I would guess that's elements, but let's look at what happens when I get the wrong answer. Okay, so I'm going to say it's gases here. I'm going to check it. It's going to tell me I was wrong. It's going to say, hmm, that wasn't the right answer. Let's give it one more try. So now you can see Flexi down here is trying to give me a hint. Uh, it's trying to, um, he is trying to, he or she is trying to help me find the answer. So let's click here. Okay, and look, it's pulled up some information from the text. Uh, that can help me. So it's actually pulled out a par uh, paragraph in the text that can help me try and answer uh, the question here. So at this point, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. In the video before, I had originally added some more demonstrations of the different question types, but in order to save time and keep this video in with the time limit, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead to the part where you can see what will happen when students get multiple questions wrong. Eventually, it's going to give me a pop-up message if I get enough answers wrong. So particles that orbit the atom, let's say they're called satellites. Okay, I'll get it wrong again. Say, uh, you know, none of the above. All right, and let's see, what is the smallest particle element? I don't know, let's say an electron here. Okay, I got it wrong again. Let's say it is um, a proton. Got it wrong again. Matter is made of gases. Maybe it's made of water. Okay, so I'm, I'm as you can see, my skill level is going down. Um, this is only a million atoms would fit the period at the end of the sentence. Uh, let's say uh, that's let's say it's true there. Okay, we'll get it wrong again. All atoms of the same element have the same number of protons. Okay, let's say it's false. And here, you can see that now it realizes that I'm struggling. And it has pulled up a pop-up message here that says, um, you know, it tries to give you some encouragement. It's trying to say, I need to brush up on the current concept. It gives me a few things that I can do 
to try and learn the topic. I can click on this reading here. Um, it will allow me to read the subject. Um, it will provide an interactive activity where I can practice on atoms and maybe that will help me learn. Or uh, it has a video, maybe learning through reading is not working for me. So it has a video that relates to the subject. I can click on any one of these and that will allow me to try and learn some of the material and then it will let me come back to practice. Now, oftentimes this will say it's locked and until you've clicked on one of these in order to learn that material, it wouldn't be unlocked, but it has already unlocked it for me. So instead of clicking on these and showing you that, we're just gonna go back to practice here. All right, so now I have completed 10 questions right. Um, if the students are struggling, as I said, it will take them off for a bit, to tell them to try and read or watch the videos. But if they come back to the practice and they eventually get 10 questions right, you can see the bar up here at the top will be full and it's gonna bring this pop-up message here that says you got 10 questions right. Students can continue to keep practicing if they want. They can answer all the questions that are available on that topic um, on CK12. It can keep on going and they can get over 100%. Now, this won't be recorded in Canvas. On Canvas, they'll only get a maximum of 100%. But if they wanna keep practicing as um, help review, they can, or they can click Stop for now. Uh, one more thing I wanna point out before I move on from this page is you'll see that now my skill level has uh, gone up now that I've got a bunch of questions right. So I must have answered some more difficult questions and gotten them uh, correct. So you can see that by answering correct answers for more difficult questions, each student will have um, a higher skill level. And that's a way you can evaluate students in addition to them just having gotten 10 questions right. Because this will be reported as a 100% score, but it won't tell you how, how difficult the questions were that they were answering. So you can see by looking at the skill level that tells you here I've got a score proficient, not above proficient uh, or mastery there, but I have answered some fairly tough questions. So I'm gonna click stop for now. That will take me back to the CK12 page here, the textbook page, I should say. And for students, it would have recorded the score here. And they would then, um, instead of a sign, because I'm in teacher mode here, there would be a button for them to turn it in. And I'll show you that when I show you how to set up in Canvas. Uh, they even have a report down here that you can click that says 100% score, 10 uh, questions were correct. There was a streak of five in a row, it was best. I, uh, four minutes spent on the assignment, um, a score of proficient, how many easy, medium, and hard questions I got wrong, and I can look and see which ones I got wrong so I can review later. Okay, let's close this. Oh, and I'll head back to the assignment. So this is a way to give students an opportunity to practice and review without um, the assignment being too stressful. Um, they can keep on practicing until they get the 100%. Now there is an option if you don't want students to all get it um, an unlimited number of practices, if you want to, to require them to get the questions right the first time, maybe you don't want them all to get the 100% score, or get unlimited practice, you can assign a quiz. Um, and that is something I will also show uh, later or maybe in future videos. But that is how the CK12 Flexbooks work. You have your reading, you have the practice over here. Students would read the reading assignment, play around with the interactives, answer the questions, and they would submit it. Another thing that I find very useful in CK12, especially as a science teacher and as a tech teacher, are the physics and chemistry simulations. They have a wide range of simulations where students can look at different problems. They can interact with these simulations to try and play around with certain variables. And then they can try and learn in a way where they can sort of get a hands-on experience, but virtually. This can be very useful for virtual learning, at home learning, when maybe some activity you try to have the students do in person, you can do through the internet here. So let me go ahead and show you one. So up here in the upper left-hand corner, there is a model rocket simulation, which I tend to use a lot. You can see here, there is a link to the simulation and it includes a worksheet that you can use to guide student questions and use as an assignment for students to turn in. 
When you click on the simulation, they always start with a question, such as how high will a model rocket fly? If you click the play button, they have text. There is a computer voice that reads the text that explains what is happening in the video. And a little animation here that is demonstrating what students are expected to kind of understand or what they might try and play around with in the next page on the simulation here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this um, so we don't have to go through the whole video here. Now, what would normally happen would be you'd play through the video, it would take you to the simulation automatically. But you can also skip ahead by clicking on the right hand side here, the little arrow, and you can see that we have a place where we can adjust some variables that regard rocket flight, and we can try and adjust these in order to see how it affects the height of the rocket. So each of the simulations has a series of sliders that we can move around to adjust each variable. And we can move those to see what's going to happen. Once you have set up your different variables, you can click the play button and it's going to run the simulation and it is going to graph the results. So these can be very useful activities for students who want to not only play around with different variables uh, to understand a question and answer to a question to address that concept, but also if they want to learn how to graph and work with visualizing data. There are also opportunities for students to go up here in the upper right hand corner. They can learn what kind of concepts are addressed in this simulation. There are tutorials that show students how to use the simulations. They can provide feedback on the simulations to CK12 if they feel like the simulations need some improvement. And there are also some challenge questions that they can answer. Okay. Now, the challenge questions are included in the worksheet. So if you want students to answer these questions, you can print out the worksheet and have them work on that. At the very end, there are some CK12 contributed questions where students can try and get more extended practice. There are some community contributed questions where teachers will add questions that they've had their students answer to try and learn more using the simulation. And there are some related phenomenon that teachers have contributed so students can learn more about similar related topics that they might be interested in. Okay. CK12 also has interactive materials called PLIX. It stands for Play, Learn, Interact, and Explore. They have these for math and for science. And they allow students to play around with some graphics in order to try and understand the concept and then answer some challenge questions. So let's pick one here. Let's look at uh, up here on the upper left hand corner, there's intervals and interval notation. So this is a math topic here. So I will click on it. It's going to go ahead and load. And let's give it a try. So every Plix activity includes a right side panel here where students can try and move around different manipulatives where they can try and learn a little bit about what is going on in that particular topic. Oftentimes they'll have little red dots to show students what they can grab onto and they can manipulate. In this case, there are brackets that students can play around with here. So they can give it a try, move it around to help them answer the questions that will come up over here in the left hand side. So here it says, challenge me. And so each of the Plix activities has a um, self-checking series of multiple choice questions that the students can answer. So here it says Matt is going fishing. The park ranger tells him that he is allowed to catch at most six fish. Which color number line would you use to represent this scenario here? So students can look at the different lines here and maybe I'm going to go ahead and guess red here. I'll select it. Students get a chance to think about their answer before they click submit. And there it says I did not get it correct. And so I can click here for show correct answer and it tells me the correct answer is blue. So all these Plix activities, they have 
multiple choice answers. Sometimes they have fill in the blank answers. But students go through about um, four or five questions. And sometimes there is a discussion question at the end, which I have them skip. There's actually an option to skip it. And that discussion question would normally take them to the CK12 website where they would post and share with other students uh, around the world. But I always have students skip that question because it's not part of the auto graded section there. Um, it doesn't give them the feedback and I don't go in and check it. It's mostly just for students to connect with peers around the world. And so I just, I tell them not to even bother because it takes a lot of time out of class. Um, and I don't really want students posting things publicly. So that is the Plix activity that with the simulations and with the Flexbook assignments kind of encompasses all of the materials that CK12 has to offer in terms of possible assignment activities. Later in this video, I will show you how you can assign these activities to your students. So next one I'm gonna talk about is how to create CK12 assignments in Canvas. How can we create an assignment that gets sent out to the students so they can read the text, answer the practice questions, and have it all automatically graded? So I'm gonna switch over to my browser here, and then I will show you a test course I've created, and I'll put in some example assignments so you can see how they work. All right, so I created a test course here so we can demonstrate how to create assignments using CK12. So I'm gonna click on it here. Now this particular test course here does not have a home page yet. Um, so it's gonna take me straight to the module page. I've already created a science and a math module because we can add science and math assignments to this course just to show how they work and how they operate. So first I'm gonna add a science assignment to the science module here. I'm gonna go ahead and click add. I'm gonna choose assignment from the drop down menu. I'm gonna create my assignment here. So I'm gonna say CK12 forces here because I know that they have a textbook page on forces. Uh, it is actually one I've used with my students. So we'll use that as a quick example here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that item. Now it's gonna create a blank assignment here, which is unpublished. I have to click on it in order to edit the assignment. Once again, nothing here. So I'm gonna click edit again. And now we have this uh, blank page where we can edit and create our assignment. Now, when I create assignments with CK12, I like to keep everything blank in this box. You could add some text in here if you wish, but it, I would think it would make it cluttered. Um, when students get used to CK12, you don't need to put any description or explanation here whatsoever. CK12 will fill the assignment page with all of its own material. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So down here, we're gonna fill out the information down below in order to get this set up to get working for the students. I usually give 10 points for each chapter reading because they get 10 questions, right? So I figure one question, per, uh, one point per question there. So that is what I like to do. Um, and I don't have any assignment groups at the moment, so I'm just gonna leave that the way it is. But normally you would choose maybe homework or um, whatever classwork type category you might have uh, for power school there. Um, you can choose to do your greatest points or as percentage. Okay. Now, here is where you can access the CK12 libraries to add your assignment. So where it says submission type, this is where you will click. You're going to choose an external tool. You will do find. And you can see the third option here is CK12. If you click on that link there, it's going to take you to your CK12 account that you have created with your email address from the uh, TSC. Now, um, what it does is it takes you here to the big broad page that I had showed you earlier. It says, what are you looking for today? And you can also search for resources up here in the search bar. I find both of those to be a hassle and I do not recommend trying to search for your resources every time you want to find them. I highly recommend going to your library where you have hopefully added all the items that you plan to use and clicking on that because it makes searching for your resources a lot simpler. So let me show you what I've done here. If, I, if you look here, I have added some 
resources that I want to use for this demo, but also for my classes. And I almost always choose all of my resources from the Flexbooks 2.0. I have also created some quizzes um, and some other materials in here that I don't want to use at the moment. So I'm going to filter all that junk out. I'm only going to look at my Flexbooks 2.0 by filtering by type. So I'm going to click on that. Now it just has my Flexbook 2.0 um, books up here. And as I said, I want to do a textbook reading on forces. So I find my CK12 physical science or middle school flex book here. It will open that up. And one interesting thing here about CK12 is if you are using one of their textbooks that is regularly updated and modified, it will tell you if you're using an older version of the book. So I'm going to pull up the latest version here because I want students to have up-to-date relevant information. So now I'm using the current version of the Physical Science for Middle School book. I scroll down. I am going to look for my section on forces. And look here. Now I have chapter uh, section 10, chapter 1 on force. This is what I want to assign to my students. So I click on it. I want them to read the chapter and use the adaptive practice. So I click start because this is what I want them to see and to access. You would click assign at this point. It is going to tell you it's creating an assignment. Then you can click select there. Now I do not load the tool in a new tab. That is a possibility if you want students to have more screen space to read it. But I find that the CK12 material fits very nicely in the Canvas page. So I don't select that option here. Uh, I usually give them unlimited attempts for submission because um, CK12 is an adaptive practice. It gives them unlimited attempts. So I just leave that blank. I just leave it at the default setting there. Now, since it's all auto graded, I always select sync to PowerSchool. It will automatically sync the grades to PowerSchool immediately. And so I always select this and it seamlessly takes their score, puts it straight into PowerSchool, uh, takes all the grading. Um, out of your hands. And so it makes it very easy to use as homework assignments. Students can practice it, they can submit it, it will then send the grades straight to PowerSchool. And then we set a due date, maybe I'll set it for this Friday here, and then I'm going to click Save and Publish. Now as a teacher what you will see is you're going to see a few options when it loads here. You are going to see um, this preview page. And let's look at this from a student perspective so we can see what they need to do in order to get the assignment completed. Okay. So as a student, what they are going to see right away is they're gonna see a big yellow button that says turn in. That means that they have not completed the assignment until this button turns green and it says it has been turned in, you will not get any score whatsoever. Even if they've already gone through, gotten partial score or 100%, if this is yellow, nothing will end up in Canvas or in PowerSchool. Even as a teacher, you will not be able to see anything. Um, so that is essential that students press this button when they are done. So make sure that students understand that. So let me show you how, how it works here from a student perspective. So you click here, we do start practice. I'm gonna just do one simple question here. So I'm gonna go down here. I've already looked at the tutorial with you earlier in the video. So here we go. What is the SI unit of force? I'm going to click Newton. It says I now have one question out of 10 correct. I'm going to stop here. I am going to go back. I can now see that I've got 10% of the points. I've got one correct. It tells me what I've gotten right. I just did one easy question. I can see my whole history here, how long it took me to do it. Uh, and it hasn't quite calculated my skill level yet because I've only answered one question. Now let's say I, I just I only want to do one question. I'm happy with a 10% grade, which I never really would be. But let's just say for instance, I am finished with my assignment. After I've clicked through the whole assignment, I need to click turn in here. It says I have not uh, done very much work. It's warning me that maybe I should continue to complete the assignment. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it in anyway. It says I am submitting it. It says I have turned in the assignment and I got a 
Now, if I have done this before the due date, I could go and continue to practice and I could turn it in again. But the, what I really want to show you here, what I'm trying to demonstrate, is that this button needs to be green in order for students to have submitted the results. Otherwise, as a teacher, you will not be able to see anything in any of the grade books. It won't show up in CK12, it won't show up in Canvas, and it won't show up in PowerSchool. So even if they have gotten 10 questions right and they've done 100%, if this has not been turned in, you get nothing. And so that is one thing that I really try to work with my students on making sure that they click that turn in button, but I still have some students that fail to click that last button there. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go and leave the student view. I'm going to show you what else you can access as a teacher. So once this loads, I'll show you what else you can see. So as a teacher, back to the teacher view here, uh, you have access to certain features through your CK12 account. As CK12 is its own learning management system, similar to Canvas, uh, it can actually store grades within your own account, and it also provides what are called insights. So let me show you a quick look at that. So if I click here on the grades, I see a heat map, which shows all of the students in the class. Right now, there's only the test student. It would show their scores. If the student gets a mastery level on each assignment, what it's going to show me is it's going to show me a green color and their score. And every student that's ever signed in in Canvas to one of my classes here and started on a practice assignment, they will get a, uh, a row in the table and columns for each assignment that they have done. And you can turn the colors on and off. And here it can, you can see that actually earlier I had put in a, another practice assignment previously into this test course on Alfred Begner and Continental Drift. And so because I have signed in before, that assignment has also popped up here, but it shows I have not even started on it. You can click on each assignment. You can see that the test student never even started the um, Continental Drift assignment at all. Um, here you can see the student the test student here did one question and got it right on the force assignment. Um, and it tells you all the details, their whole history about how long it took them to complete the assignment, what their best streak was, all the details that the students would see. If you're having a difficulty getting syncing between PowerSchool and um, Canvas and CK12, you can export all your data to a CSV file here, so you can import it into either Canvas or PowerSchool from there. So that's one manual way to get the grades. Or if you just prefer to keep grades traditionally in a spreadsheet, you can also access them that way. So this is a great way to check out students' progress and see what they're doing in CK12. What I love about it is you can look in here and see how long students are spending on it, how difficult the questions are that they're answering. And you can see, have students been rushing through my assignments? Because I have found that many times students rush the assignments and then when the tests and quizzes come up, they do poorly and they, sit, they want to know why. And I go back and I say, well, it looks like you might have um, done the assignment, but you're kind of rushing your way through it. You're not taking your time. Maybe you haven't, um, you know, taking your time to actually read into the assignment. And you can actually, for each uh, student here, we can click on Class Insights, it pulls up the page for each and in every individual student. So for Class Insights, it tells um, tells you, you know, what students can do better on. Um, it can tell them what kind of concepts you might want to have them work on. Um, it tells you a chart of all your students and their skill levels. Um, but here is one thing that I found was surprisingly insightful that, you know, taught me a lot about what my students were doing in class. Down here, you can see a bar, um, well, a line graph, I should say, that shows how long students are spending on the reading. And as you could see in my er earlier portion of the video, just a few uh, seconds earlier there, when I was going through here, you can see I spent about a minute or so on this particular graphic. 
So when I open this up, it says how much time I spent looking here at this particular part of the page. But you can also see that I rushed through this. I didn't even bother to read the rest of the page here. So if students are struggling and they're coming to you and saying, um, why am I not doing well on this assignment? Well, you can tell them, you know, maybe you need to take some more time on the reading or maybe you should read this paragraph more. You can actually look and see, are my students just rushing to the uh, practice trying to guess their way through or are they actually taking the time to read the assignments? And you can see how long they spent at each portion. Or maybe a student is struggling and you can actually see if they're spending a lot of time on a paragraph, maybe there's tricky words in there, um, maybe they got stuck on a certain portion, you will see that particular portion of the line graph um, blow up where they spend a lot of time lingering. Or it could also just mean that maybe the student scrolled down to this part of the page, left their tab open, walked away, used the restroom, uh, and then just left the CK12 page open for a long time. But what I found was that I had a lot of students early in the school year, they were taking their time reading the different pages, even watching the videos. But then as the school year went on further and further, they were just looking at the title page, spending you know maybe about 10 seconds on it before, before they were just going straight to clicking view practice because they thought based on what they have done in class, they could jump ahead and work on the practice. And at which point, um, if, if they start really you know, not taking time reading and they want to rush through it, you can go ahead and you can change the practice um, and you can customize it and turn it into a quiz. So you can go here and you would be able to customize it. You can create a quiz where you use their question sets, but you can reduce the number of attempts. You can maybe only give them three attempts, maybe only give them one attempt, um, create it, and then when you add that to your library, students will then be limited on how many attempts they can do. So to end this video, here I have posted my email address if you want to have any more information about any of the topics discussed in this video. You can email me at any time at tlfreeman.tsc.k12.in.us and ask me a question about any of the topics I've covered in this video and I will try to reply to you as soon as I can. In addition to replying to any information about this video, I am also willing to share information on other topics too or I might create videos in the future if you so desire. Um, I can create videos more about CK12 if you want to create graded assignments using simulations or the Plix activities using either Google Forms or Canvas. I might create a video for that in the future. If you're interested in learning how to create your own content in CK12, such as um, text, quizzes, and practices, I have done that. And some of my textbooks that I use for my tech class, I've actually created uh, new pages of material that I have typed up and gathered. So I can show you how to do that. Uh, I'm also willing to discuss other topics on other subjects such as Nearpod, which is something I use in my class on a regular basis in which I can present presentations to the students and they can follow along and there are interactive materials that go along with it so they are engaged and I can control what appears on their screen. Um, I've also been using the Google Forms a lot lately and I've learned a lot about how you can use Google Forms to create graded assignments, but also how you can create digital escape room games which can be really fun, especially if we ever end up doing a virtual learning experience. You can still have that kind of game environment that you feel in the classroom. Uh, they're really entertaining, but you can do it in a digital form and students get really engaged with that. They find a lot of fun, gives them something to do at home that's maybe a little bit more than just doing digital worksheets. And lastly, something I used a while ago that I have utilized in my classroom is the Edulastic system. It's an online assessment system that has a lot of auto grading features and so if anyone has interest in using that it also works for all subjects such as math, science, um, English, social studies. Um, you can set up questions using that and have it automatically graded. I can show you how to use that and how to incorporate that into Canvas also. So that is all I have for you today. If at any point in time you have more questions feel free to contact me and let me know if you want me to make any more videos. But that's all I have for you now. Thank you very much.